Um, I'm Maria Costa. I'm a PhD student in Chagas. I'm working with Edgar Garcia Manzanilla and uh, my project is um, on feeding strategies. But currently I'm working on biosecurity in islands and we have a big project uh, between Chagas and the Central Veterinary Lab to assess respiratory diseases in islands. And one of the first steps of this project would be to assess biosecurity um, in Irish pig farms. And then we'll follow up a batch of the pigs from those farms to the abattoir. And then we'll um, do some lung scoring and collecting some other measures so that we can come up with the prevalence of some diseases in islands. And, um, and then compare the, the, the biosecurity results we have on island with uh, some other countries that already published our results with a specific protocol. Well, for the protocol we are using, uh, Biocheck UGent, which was developed in Belgium, in, in Ghent University, um, they divide biosecurity in two main things. One of them would be the external biosecurity, uh, in which it's basically everything you have to prevent diseases from to coming into your farm. Mm -hmm. And regarding these, Ireland scores very, very well. Um, most of the Irish pig farmers are not buying breeders, I mean gilts, or they're not buying piglets at all. And the semen that is bought is usually bought from, from farms with a health, uh, high health status. And apart from that, all the Irish pig farmers expect their visitors to have um, pig free time before coming into their farms. Mm -hmm. and they have specific clothes, the transport in general is very well, the drinking water is very well. But when we come into the internal biosecurity um, uh, scores, which is the other uh, component, external and internal biosecurity, we can Internal biosecurity would be everything you have to prevent diseases from spreading once in, they are already inside your farm. And regarding the internal biosecurity, we have um, not so good scores when compared to other countries. And this, this would be mainly because um, some of the farms have some mixing from the, for example, looking at the piglets at the winner's first stage, they do mix some of the older pigs with the younger. They have um, some mixing at the fattening unit as well. And if we look particularly at the cleaning and disinfection, at the measures. Farmers don't usually wash their hands or change their gloves. They don't really use a different set of clothes to come when we, we move from the firing house until the fattening unit. And you should have some care with that because you are actually transporting diseases from the firing unit to the fattening unit or more commonly from the fattening unit to the firing unit. And we just came up with these results and we, we were actually able to tell that these results are more or less the same as they have in the other countries. Um, and they came up with a study in Belgium in which they gave practical advice to farmers in order to improve these scores. And the, the advice would be simple things that don't really cost much, such as washing hands, changing gloves, or creating a work, workflow for the, for the farm. For example, plan for the workflow would be working always from the smallest pigs to the biggest pigs, or assigning uh, workers to specific parts of the, of the farm, in which this will help them to organize the, the flow and preventing from mixing and coming into different units and carrying out pathogens. And the other thing would be to have a set of clothes for each one of those compartments. You don't need to have a new one, but if you have a specific one for that unit, then you can just change your clothes and move on. The advices gave, uh, that were given in, in Belgium, they were actually very nice and they actually came up with a full economic model to um, describe the impact of these measures and some of the farmers were even uh, able to reduce the amount of antimicrobials used, which is quite promising, I'd say. But at the same time as we are collecting these biosecurity measures in Ireland, we are actually asking about other stuff such as feed and vaccination, genetics and uh, antimicrobials use as well. If we look at the vaccination protocols, we can tell more or less what is the norm in all of the, the, the pig farms. And if we look at, the, at them, we can just say that most of the farms are vaccinating against parvovirus or circovirus. So that wouldn't actually tell us more uh, about the farms. But if you look at the flu, for example, mm -hmm. some farms or 30% uh, of the farms are using the vaccination against the flu. And since when, whenever we go to the abattoir, we'll collect blood samples, we will be able to tell more or less the actual prevalence of these uh, disease in Ireland. And then we'll be able to tell farmers, maybe you are using it uh, right or maybe not, maybe you don't need it. Uh, it's advice like this that will do the change. And then when we look at the feed strategies, for example, for in Chagas we have the advisory uh, program and some of the farms actually do give their data to the e-profit monitor, which is the system we have to record all the performance. And if we put all this information, the feed, vaccination, antibiotics, 
and um, the management and biosecurity practices against the performance data, then we will be able to understand why is it that those farms that were the best were in fact the best, mm -hmm. or what, what did they do to be the best when we are comparing to the others? What do a farmer has to do in order to improve their results? It's all these practical things that we are trying to understand and then uh, talk to the farmers and tell them you have to do this and they will be... This is the practical stuff or, of the whole project and we have to achieve. Yeah. I think most of them are just so used to do these particular um, routines. They just they go there and then they, they start on one side and they go to the other and then sometimes they remember that they forgot something and they go back. Mm. It's just they're not used to think that they have maybe if they have just a protocol to do it and if they do it all the time that can just solve those problems that they are not actually seeing at the moment and sometimes that's why you need some, some somebody from the outside to tell you look you're doing this you could be doing this mm. and so it's by helping them seeing and trying to understand their own practices that will come up with the solutions.